I am now, I'd like to introduce our next, our next speaker who is Jan Almanzor. And Jan has actually been a part of my gut feeling for a number of years. He is a stage 3B stomach cancer survivor. Um, and he just recently hit his five year uh, cancer free milestone. Um, as I said, he's a longtime member of my gut feeling. Um, and um, I just want to introduce him. Jan. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Jan Almanzar. I am, I think, a good husband and father of two lovely rapscallions aged five and 10. I am a stomach cancer survivor. And I'm here to share my, gosh, I won't use the word journey, but adventure instead. It's been about three years since I spoke at the conference. Since then, it has continued to blossom into a growing community of friends, family, medical professionals, caretakers, widows, researchers, basically anyone under the sun. And that's why I feel so honored and grateful to be in front of my friends once again. So where to begin, huh? Maybe I'll start with a little bit about me. I'll take a trip down memory lane, at least from what I can remember. Back in 2014, I was quite healthy. Actually, I felt like I was in a real good space health-wise, if not one of the best. Running a few Ks, going to the gym, eating healthy, and doing some tough moderate competitions. Life was good, and my family were expecting another addition to the family. It wasn't not too long in May, um, after a 10K fundraiser for Camp Ooch, I started to cough. It was an annoying cough that wouldn't go away, and it ran into the summer. I've experienced something like this before, and it was related to allergies, so I rolled with the punches. It got really annoying, so I went to a few doctors, and I was told it was acid reflux. So I was prescribed uh, some PPIs, proton pump inhibitors, and it worked for a while, and my cough subsided, and did a little bit of traveling. As winter kicked in, my cough came back, and once again, I was back on the medication to control the cough. Late 2014 is when I started to feel tired. A bit more tired than usual, I would say. I would get back home from work and just immediately crash. I thought maybe it was from overworking or not getting enough sleep. I felt like something was a bit off, though I, I, I trucked on through it thinking that this feeling would play out. Um, but thinking about it now in retrospect, I probably should have listened to my body earlier and did something about it. That's definitely one lesson that um, I would prescribe to anyone else, to be honest. At that time, my attention was on my wife and her well-being. She was pregnant and due to give birth. And on January 29th, my wife gave birth to our baby boy, Colton. Here is a picture of me holding our newborn. And I distinctly remember being really fatigued and um, falling asleep while holding him here at the hospital. I, I definitely felt um, really tired and um, hoping that uh, it would pass through. A few months into March though, I, I continued to feel unwell. Uh, I went back to the doctor and told him whatever was being prescribed to me, it wasn't working and I needed some help. By this time, you know, as I mentioned, I was really fatigued. I lost weight and I felt cold all the time. And the doctor sent me to do some blood work and, and that's when alarms just went off. I was immediately due for a colonoscopy. I, I truly wasn't expecting that much. Um, I thought maybe it was an ulcer or something. Um, you know, I was, I'm young at the time. I didn't think there would be anything that was um, serious. Um, I do remember after the procedure, groggy, lying on the hospital bed and my wife beside me and the doctor emerging from the curtains, he comes up close to me and whispers the words, I'm sorry, but we found something. I just immediately kind of jumped and he says, we found cancer. And he said, and I asked, and I said, are you sure? And he responded, I am sure, I am sorry. Telling your mother and father, uh, that was tough. That wasn't quite the hoot. <laughs> I remember my mother running out of the house and I think she just went straight to the church. 
I don't think I even told my daughter straight up. Uh, she was quite young at the time, but she's smart. And uh, she figured it out on her own, <laughs> I guess, after all these multiple hospital visits. But in that early time of the prognosis, it was like Christmas every day. You know, a lot of people were over. This was pre-COVID, of course. Um, and uh, there was bringing food and family and being really supportive of everything. I was extremely lucky uh, to get connected uh, to Dr. Darling and her wonderful team at Princess Margaret Hospital. After some initial tests, I was diagnosed with stage 3B stomach cancer. And at that time, I wasn't um, eligible um, for surgery um, as it has touched upon uh, several lymph nodes. It was a little bit of a setback, <clears throat> but my oncologist and the one leading my chemotherapy treatments, Dr. Chen, assured me with a solid plan of treatments uh, to get me where I needed to be, which is to be eligible for surgery. It was surreal uh, going to the chemotherapy unit, at least for the first time. You walk around, you see people of all ages sitting in these big comfy chairs attached to all these machines. Yet they're there, smiles on their faces, joking around with friends, family, the staff, grabbing a snack, some even sleeping, listening to music. I couldn't believe where I was or even how I got there. I eventually settled in and became one of the regulars and I too became acquainted with the staff. I met some amazing people there, people that really changed my life. A quick shout out to Jerry, um, who isn't with us here today, and um, a shout out to his family as well. I met him and his family there. Um, he gave me tips on how to deal with chemo, and his family was really supportive. So wherever you are, I'm still putting up the good fight. After several rounds of chemo, uh, consisting of capsidabine, Herceptin, the playbook that Dr. Chang grew up uh, drew out for me was successfully executed with super positive results. And I'm grateful, I was totally grateful to be in the position where I was actually eligible for surgery. I did create a few of these uh, things on my Instagram here just to uh, keep me going. Um, in late 2015, I was headed into surgery at uh, Toronto General, where Dr. Darling and her team were successful in an eight-hour surgery that consisted of a total gastrectomy and removal of the affected lymph, lymph nodes. Um, they were later confirmed clear, which was fantastic. Um, I do remember um, being in a dreamlike state, uh, groggy after my surgery when Dr. Darling approached me, and I remember her smile and saying, we got it, we got it all. Um, at that time, I remember being so happy and smiled at her, relieved and falling back asleep. I was at the hospital for a few weeks of rec for recovery. It was tough, uh, no lie. <laughs> No solid foods, of course, a lot of physiotherapy, a lot of slow walking, if you want to say, draining fluids all the time, um, getting multiple CT scans, um, even at 1 a.m. At any time was available, they, they would just throw me on the machine and the way I would go. I do remember uh, when I finally left the hospital after those few weeks and was able to take a shower at home, I broke down and cried. It was, I was so happy and grateful to be back at home taking a shower. If I'm having a rough day and I remember how present I was, then it kind of just puts everything into perspective. Probably a few weeks later, I was back at the hospital due to a blood infection. Um, this is where I spent uh, Christmas with my family. You know, they brought out the goodness there with some Lindor. Um, come spring, though, I was back in full force and ready for more, for more rounds of chemo. Early 2016, I received my official document stating that I, was, that I was clear with no occurrences of the disease. And this was something that all of us imagined and wished for. Um, I finally went back to work in 2017 and started to feel normal, the new normal. Um, Really a big thank you to, uh, to Terranet for their strong support throughout the years. 
I am forever grateful to them and my friends that I've met there. So, where are we now? That's me parting it up. <laughs> I am still taking it day by day, and even meal by meal. Eating is still a challenge, but I've certainly found a heightened appreciation for food. I have few restrictions, um, you know, like eating super sweet ice cream. It will just go right through me. <laughs> but I can still eat pretty much anything I want. Um, the spicier and the better, actually. The more veggies, the better, of course. And most importantly, I can still enjoy coffee and sushi. So where am I really right now? Well, as of this moment, um, about I am about a week away um, from finding results of my CT scan that I do every six months. I still feel it. Um, the anxiety, um, or scan anxiety, they say, even though um, I feel relatively great, I feel uh, in good spirits, in a good mood, but in the weeks before or after my scan, any feeling or ache in my body is enhanced like 20 times. And, and that's what I feel now. Um, a million thoughts are in your head um, for maybe a headache that lasts longer than usual. It's maybe just a normal headache and I'm just overthinking it. Sure, it's been five years, but it really hasn't time has kind of worked oddly in the last five years but every couple of months I feel like how it was in the early days dealing with this but the one thing I do know is that I'm not alone uh, with my friends and my family behind me and supportive groups like my gut feeling and events like today I feel like I've got this I think we've all got this I've been given this platform to share my life experience with my family, friends, and all of you. And you've inspired me, and I hope to inspire you in return. Before I go though, I just wanted to send my love and thanks to my wife, Nicole, my kids, River and Colton, to my mom, mom-in-law, dad, grandmother, siblings, friends, coworkers, the entire team at Princess Margaret, Dr. Darling, Dr. Chen, uh, to the blood workers who don't give me pain and are smooth with the needle. And of course, uh, to the My Gut Feeling team, especially to Caddy and to Teresa for their continued support and amazing ability to grow our community, most especially in this recent and challenging times. I've also left my contact information there for you if you have any questions or if you just want to follow what's going on with me, perhaps, uh, so you can feel feel free to reach me at any time. Um, I'm always available if you need me. And I will see you next year. Cheers. Hi, good afternoon, everybody. Um, I filmed that uh, that video uh, about uh, two weeks ago. Um, this is due to some conflicts um, um, that I had this past weekend. Uh, and so um, since then, uh, I did get my results uh, from the test or my last CT scan. And um, I was assured that um, that it was cleared. And so, um, you know, that was really great news uh, to hear from uh, from the doctor because uh, it was really a, a long time coming. Um, you know, five years, um, you have this vision of, you know, trying to overcome this, and and you know, it's it's a journey. It's it's uh, it's definitely not. Um, there are some baby steps, and there are some big steps uh, involved with that. And so, to finally uh, hear that um, from the doctor was just a big sigh of relief um, to me and my and my family. And so, um, so November is it was quite. It is a big month <laughs> in general. Um, you know, hearing the results, uh, you know, I got that last week. And then, um, and also today's my birthday, which is <laughs> another major milestone because, um, you know, I just, when I did uh, get the news um, that I was diagnosed uh, with cancer, uh, I was like, you know, fuck, I'm going to, I'm going to make it to 40, excuse my language, but, um, you know, that was one of my goals, right? It's just, something that I wanted to put out there. So um, it was definitely a, um, a big thing for me. So 
Um, before I go, I, I just wanted to, um, yes, just send my thanks um, to everyone out there. And um, if you have any questions or if um, you always can um, have anything that you may think of after the fact or after this meeting, you can always hit me up. And I think um, that's for all of us here at, at My Gut Feeling as well. Um, they're just so open um, to, uh, thank you for the happy birthday wishes, everyone. Um, and, and I think I got that from Caddy and Teresa. It's just their openness and transparency uh, to support each other um, with this. And um, and a big reason I'm so glad to uh, to speak here today is because of them. Uh, they've they've inspired me um, to support others as well. And I can understand that sometimes I not I might not be there all the time, but um, if you ever ever ask, I, I will find some time um, to get in contact with you, or if you need anything, you let me know. So thank you very much. Thank you kindly. And um, if you have any questions, I'll see you at the panel. Thank you. What, Jen? It's your birthday and your five-year cancer anniversary. Come on. <laughs> Coffee and sushi are definitely on us. Um, and we'll we'll ask you how you're celebrating a little bit later in the panel. I hope you're you're really making 2020 your year because uh, Congrats to you. That's a big milestone. Thank you very much for speaking as well.